Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. And yes, I'm going to be talking about Dungeons and Dragons 5e. The topic for today, would you believe it? We're going to talk about building and expanding the NPCs or non-player characters in Dragon of Ice by a Peak. This is our Dungeon Master's Guide. It's not suitable for players, although I don't think it necessarily will hurt if you want to watch it later on after you've played through. But since it is a Dungeon Master's Guide and not a Player's Guide, I would suggest leaving this one alone. There are plenty of other videos you can watch. Now, what I want to say really briefly is um, the question, do you need better NPCs or non-player character details for Dragon of Ice by Peak? It's a no-brainer. You definitely do. I am going to be referring to Sly Flourish. He has a method for creating NPCs. We're going to use that. Um, I'm also going to be referring to Bob World Builder because the two of us did a video on role-playing NPCs in Dragon of Ice by Peak and a lot of the building an NPC is there. Um, I actually talk probably more about building the characters or NPCs rather than role-playing the NPCs because you're the dungeon master, you really need to do that yourself. I can't explain everything. I can only sort of set you in the right direction. So the topic as it happens tends to be very common. Um, it is one thing that people keep asking me and I totally understand why because there just is so little. Um, you might have noticed already when you look through the adventure, Dragon of Ice by a Peak, doesn't have enough information on the non-player characters. If it doesn't have enough information, it has very little information, none of which is useful to you as a dungeon master because apparently this is supposed to be set out and designed for beginner dungeon masters and a beginner group and therefore easily laid out so it looks like an easy to run adventure but actually requires a lot of work on your part. The first thing that I want you to do is write down all of the information the adventure provides on the NPCs or non-player characters and then you're going to fill in the gaps. The method that I'm providing you with is fill in the gaps and for those of you who are aware of my Lost Mine of Fandelver uh, videos and the characters that I covered there, the NPCs there, these are the techniques that I use. I can't provide you every technique because some things can't be explained. And if I tried to explain everything, it would just be too long. So we're going to stick with the basics in terms of how I do this. So here are six methods for quickly creating or expanding the non-player characters in the adventure. Now when I say quick, that's comparatively, compared to something else. This is the quickest way that I can think of in terms of you doing it yourself. That doesn't mean that you could do it in five seconds or even five minutes. You may find it takes a bit more time than that. And frankly, you will find that the more time you spend on a character or non-player character, often the better it will be. There's usually a natural end point to everything that you develop. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to suggest to you is very easy. You're going to use the backgrounds in the player's handbook. Now that's the character backgrounds. I know that sounds strange, but there's a reason for this. There's a lot of character backgrounds in the player's handbook, and there's plenty of supplements that have backgrounds that you can use as well. Now the great thing about them is they give you the nuts and bolts of a character, which also means you can get the nuts and bolts of an NPC from those backgrounds. I've talked about this sort of thing before, so your first task is to select a background that best fits the NPC or non-player character based on the notes that you have made. And I would suggest going and checking out Nerdarchy. Um, they have a video on picking D&D backgrounds and that will probably help you figure that out. It should be pretty obvious when you're looking at the adventure, even with the lack of information, which background is going to fit, uh, fit for that particular NPC. That's usually how I go about it first. That's my first task. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to select the personality traits, bonds, ideals, and flaws from the tables provided. Now I'm selecting them. I'm not randomly rolling them. What I'm doing is I'm taking what I have 
and I look at the ones that seem to marry up and seem to fit the most with what I have and those are the ones I'm going to pick. So if I don't have personality traits, I can fill in the gaps. And bonds, ideals, flaws, those are all there and provided. Now that does not mean that you have to use them. If you suddenly, something crops up or pops up in your mind that you think would work better, then use that. These are simply, I guess, it's a word association and uh, image association we're using to help you develop the character organically in some way and these are just tools to do the job. Okay, the third thing I recommend that you uh, do, and that is when it comes to using the backgrounds to create the NPCs, please choose the details from the backgrounds tables. Do not roll them randomly. You will get all sorts of bizarre results that probably will not fit with your adventure. This is one of the problems with using a completely random system. That's why I suggest options, limiting your options to something that seems to be on the right track. So rolling dice is actually a pretty bad idea when it comes to selecting the, the different aspects of those backgrounds. So do not pick up the dice and do that. That would be my advice to you. You do not need to listen to my advice. It is advice like anything else, which means you can take it or leave it. It is up to you. I'm just basing it on what I know. Okay, the fourth thing you need to understand is once you've done that, I want you to add in the new details to that NPC in your notes. That is now locked down. And in terms of locked down, it's still only on paper. That means that if you feel that at some point when you look through everything, it doesn't make sense, then strip it back and put something else in there. Whether you start again in some aspects or whether you put in an idea that actually makes more sense. Um, one of the aspects to building NPCs that I can't explain is the amount of time I spend driving to work, sitting on my toilet and doing other things where ideas for an NPC will suddenly pop up. And I will usually have a focus for a period of time, or maybe a week or two or even longer, and I will just slit in the things that make sense to me. Okay, so we've tried the backgrounds, but there's more tools available. That's only the first tool. We need a few more, right? The next one is, I would suggest using the sidekicks. Yeah, that sounds strange. I have actually talked about this with Bob before, and uh, for those of you who know Bob World Builder, the D&D Essentials Kit, or Dungeons & Dragons Essentials Kit, has sidekicks. Tasha's has sidekicks. Okay, Unearthed Arcana. You should be able to find the sidekick stuff for Unearthed Arcana there. I would suggest using sidekicks. That's actually a really good thing, but specifically the ones in the Dungeons & Dragons Essentials Kit. Now, the reason is they're already pre-made. You do not have to do anything. It's like plug and play. So all the hard work is done for you. So the first thing you want to do is you want to replace the NPC notes that you have made on a particular character or add to them, and you're going to use the sidekick that best represents that character, okay? Whichever character you are in the process of building out or expanding, you're gonna use the sidekicks to fill in the gaps, okay? Or if you feel it would do um, no justice to that NPC, you can replace that NPC completely with the sidekick. So there's a couple of different options here. Now the great thing about the sidekicks, as I said, they're sort of like plug and play, is these sidekicks are awesome because they give you a name, they give you a picture, they give you the personality traits, they give you bond, ideals, flaws, even some quirks, and a profession. Almost everything that you need. There's, there is one other aspect to a non-player character that you need, but we're going to get to that in a second. So that will actually help you build out that NPC. Now, if you feel that there's nothing appropriate to the NPC that you're working with and you need a different method, we're going to move on to method number three. And this is actually no secret. It's been around since at least 2013. I believe Sly Flourish was the first person that I know of to ever present the idea of using story cubes. This is Rory's story cubes as a prompting device to help you build your story. Now, specifically, he talked about 
creating NPCs. And that's what we're going to do here. We're taking his idea back from the, and I put the video down the in the description, uh, back in 2013, Sly Flourish actually shows you how he does this. So many YouTubers and other Dungeon Masters over time have now picked up this idea because frankly it's actually a pretty good idea and Sly Flourish frankly has lots of really good ideas. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to roll between one and four picture dice or cubes and this will give us the ideas we need for the NPC. Okay, It's the same process as the background features. So the things we are looking for are the personality traits one dice to represent that. You could have two if you wanted, but one is probably enough. The bond, the ideal, and the flaw. Okay, so that's why I'm saying one to four picture dice, because you might not need all of those. You might only need a few of those to, as I said, fill in the gaps. Now, the thing with the dice, if you look at the image on the dice and you cannot think of anything that would relate to that NPC with regard to the four things I've talked about or the things that you need, don't worry. Put the dice aside and roll another dice and try it again. Okay. A little bit of practice is required using story cubes. I would suggest playing the game with some friends, uh, whether it be your Dungeons and Dragons friends or your family, it doesn't matter. And just practice using the cubes. It explains in there how they work. Okay. It's a, it's a picture association method to actually link images together into a story. All you are doing is taking pictures and linking them into a character which eventually will be used to tell a story. Okay, the next one. The thing that I, this is why I've separated this one, it's really important, and I know a lot of people don't necessarily um, understand that, but here's the thing that I want you to understand, and that is you need to roll one separate dice or extra dice. One of those cubes, is going to be used to generate an idea for the NPC or non-player character's motivation in the adventure with regard to the characters. Now, sometimes there's two motives. There might be a motive for the adventure and a motive for the, um, you know, with relation to the characters that the players are playing. That one is the most important, okay? With relation to how they will react to the player's characters is the most important one. But if there is a second motive that you feel needs to be there, then there's no nothing stopping you rolling another cube. Now the only time you should consider rolling this extra Rory Story Cube dice, okay, don't roll it if it's completely obvious to you what the NPC's motive is in the adventure. If you know what it is because it's pretty clear and you don't need help with that, don't use the cube. Use your own brain, okay? All right. Now, now that we've covered all of that, I've already sort of briefly talked about using story cubes and how to go about doing that, and you can see that we can use those pictures as a way of um, associating, them, associating them with different parts of the character. There's nothing ro wrong with re-rolling the, the story cubes. You can re-roll story cubes if it's not helping you to fill in the blanks. I've already said this, in every case, feel free to do so, because sometimes the image that comes up, just you just can't find anything that connects to that character. But it will help you. Honestly, I've found it really useful. And uh, I use a combination of all of these techniques rather than just one technique. Okay, method number four is actually a bit of a cheat. Now, if you're like me and you want to keep your life simple, you could simply use some of the NPC or non-player character videos I have already made for the Lost Mine of Fandelver if they are using the same character in the adventure. And there are a lot of non-player characters or NPCs in Fandelin that get recycled in Dragon of Ice by a Peak. And I just happen to have done a video on just about every single NPC in Fandlin. In fact, I think I have done every single one. So you have the resources there. The only difference is, I want you to view the Lost Mine of Fandelver as having taken place either first or at the same time, probably 
before Dragon of Ice by Peak. I kind of feel like The Lost Mon of Fandelva is the adventure that happens first, and Dragon of Ice by Peak is what follows on from there. So that means that those characters may have developed a little bit differently since they were last used. So that doesn't mean those particular videos are going to be the absolute. You may need to tinker with them a little bit. Okay, let's move on to the next technique, which is number five. If you really do not have time and you need to get things done fast, then this is what I normally do. As I get onto the internet, I find Google, and I Google and look for a picture, a suitable picture for the NPC. I have the NPC's basic idea, I have at least a name, I need to find a picture, and I'm looking for race and profession, because usually you have at least race and profession available to you. If you don't, and you just have profession, then that's what you're looking for. And I just grab a picture. Be careful with this. You can spend far too much time looking for stuff and never find the right exact picture. So don't get too fussy, okay? Otherwise, instead of taking a minute or two to find a picture that works for you, you wind up spending hours. All right, so Bob actually talked about um, random generators. And yes, they get the job done, okay? So you can use a NPC or non-player character, computer um, software or application to generate it randomly. I don't like these because they're far too random. I've never found them hugely useful. They just cannot refine things enough for me. But if you're desperate, you can use them. What I want to say really briefly about the nature of software that allows you to build an NPC is they really can't build in everything that you need. There are some good ones out there. But if you're already building on top of an existing structure for a character, it's very hard to build those aspects into a generator because they don't usually allow you to do that. So this is why it's last on the list. It's also why I would prefer, and you do not need to listen to me, that you don't use them because you really won't get the results that you're looking for. And if you're on YouTube watching a video on how to do something like this, the last thing you want to hear is somebody say, go and use a random generator because, good Lord, you could have figured that one out yourself. Okay, That's why I have explained my process and how I do it um, and there's enough instructions here, I feel you can get what you need done. Okay, what else do I do that helps me build an NPC? Time. I think about a character for a long time, and sometimes I don't have time to do that. And you might not have that time. And it's not a technique, it's not a science, it's art. I know that sounds weird, but honestly, it's it's thinking, it's an art, and it, with anything that's an art, you can't rush it. Um, so I can't give you, you know, that little extra X factor, whatever I do in terms of building NPCs, because it's not something I can, can explain to you. It's something that I, I just, I, I spend time on it, and we get there eventually. Now, if you found this video helpful, fantastic. I have hundreds of videos for players and Dungeon Masters, but I have a series of videos on Dragon Vice by Peak for Dungeon Masters, and you're welcome to go and check those out. If you want to support the channel so I keep doing video content like this, you can through Patreon, the Amazon affiliate links down in the description, the merchandise shelf underneath all of my videos, or just watch my videos, that's fine too. Make sure to share, like, and subscribe, hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.